in here. Yeah, yeah I thought those were all checked already. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're all taken from. Okay, the checks out. Okay. okay, now we can do the interview. All right, let's start. <laughs> it's time to start. It was Infinity, he was on the track. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> My mistake was on the But isn't it the same? <laughs> <laughs> Similar. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if, um, um, in the last few years, the few years that I've seen you play uh, um, in Paris, obviously, um, the look of the band has evolved to sort of, I don't know if it's Tony Garnier's influence, but, uh, you know, from... Uh, it, it, it's, you become this sort of, you know, drifting cowboy sort of Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys outfits, you know, the hats and the suits and the mustaches and everything. Or was it just a gradual sort of like common choice or did you, did you just say, hey boys, let's dress up now? Well, uh, we, we kind of dress like people where we're, 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 we're from. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, I don't know, I'm not really, that, that uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're, we don't, it's not a fashionable statement of any kind. I, I don't. I'm not aware that it is. You had your 60th birthday recently, and all the magazines celebrated it. Yes. Did you celebrate it? Me? Yeah. Yes, in the usual way. Yeah. You know, blow out some candles and. Some That's about it. Friends, some yeah. yeah, mostly just family people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you younger than that now? Sure, hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. That's the song. That's correct. Wow. You got that right. I got that yeah, right. that's right. Does, yeah. does the amount, the level of celebration around such an event, does, does that bother you? Does it please you? No. All these prizes you never win before, and now. All I know. I know. I'm winning a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I think they're catching right. up on wasted time. I don't know. We didn't give them nothing for all these years. That's just uh, dumb all these Maybe there's an element of that in it. I wouldn't know. <laughs> you were just talking about being uh, nominated for the Nobel Prize. Yeah, I hear about that, but uh, who would that put me in the company of? I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, Hemingway. Oh, Hemingway. Uh, I don't really think, uh, I think all those guys that, well, that want to write, like Hemingway, write for Time Magazine, and <laughs> don't they? Uh, Hemingway is this. Huh? Steinbeck is an old favorite. Steinbeck? Steinbeck, Steinbeck. Mm hmm. I'm not sure that I really belong in that category of people because, you know, I play. I don't know. Um, that's difficult to say. You know, it's all really pretty relative. You mentioned that the, the producers are kind of prisoners of the Bob Dylan. How about yourself having done so many things? Being a legend, I mean, mm -hmm. whatever. How does it affect your? Uh, life not your well. Ninety-five percent of the time, it doesn't affect my life whatsoever. The the other part, I mean, uh, you just uh, we we who are you know um, get involved in fame, we just have to learn to deal with it every any kind of way we can. I don't have any strategy for it. I usually try to be as polite as possible. Sometimes wonder why me. Not at this point. Uh, I, I know what it is I've done to, you know, to be so famous. So. Well. In one of your last conversations with Adam Ginsberg, you said the fame had no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Uh, <clears throat> my question is, what would you substitute your fame for? With? Huh? What would you substitute fame with? I mean, if you didn't, if you weren't that famous, you couldn't do the ever never ending tour and do the albums you wanted to, the way you wanted to, so forth. I mean, fame must have some advantages. I probably has a, quite a few. Um, you know, um, I, I I don't. I, I really don't do that uh, travel in that world with of the rich and famous though so uh, I don't really feel I'm part of that culture in any way do you find it hard to go to places where you're not being recognized everywhere well at this, at, at this point I'm recognized just about everywhere I, everywhere so when was the last time For, you went out unrecognized Mm, I don't even remember. Do you feel that um, um, 
the work you've done, was it be poetry or singing or the combination of both, that you've arrived at a certain time that, that um, in American history perhaps, um, where you've been allowed to, to achieve great fame and uh, a certain degree of fortune, um, would you consider, do you consider this lucky compared to doing the same work but you know maybe 30 years before you'd have been an obscure artist? Do you think that um, the same work that you, that you do um, <coughs> Gaining this great, great, great exposure through uh, the time that you arrived in was it? Is it a benediction? Is it good? I mean, that you, uh, it, you, you expo your work was exposed so broadly. Do you know? Do you understand? What? Um, sort of. Um, uh, it, I didn't really choose to do what it is you see me doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it chose me. If I had anything to do with it, I'd have, I'd have been something different. Maybe you know, a scientist, or engineer, or doctor, or somebody who, you know, the, the, those are the people I would, I look up to. I don't really look up to entertainers at all. They, they don't have any meaning for me one way or another. You must have had no, ambition in the beginning, ambition to do something. You said music chose you. You, you also chose music in that way. Mm, maybe. Can you explain yeah. that it chose me? That's, that, I mean, that's a, really interesting. Well, uh, I said it. You know, my, that's, that was what I did. Yeah. In one of the lines, you obviously say that uh, I've been in trouble ever since I set my suitcase down. Is that the theme for you still? That <laughs> that, that's the only line that you remember? <laughs> that's that's I was it. Wondering, that's I was it. Wondering whether that's the, the theme. Well, <coughs> anybody want to know what was in the suitcase? <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Or where I sat it down. I don't know. The white. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, do you feel good the present time, or you miss? something from the past. Miss? Miss. Oh, mm, there must be something, you know, I think I miss a plenty, but, uh, you know, I'm not really a very uh, nostalgic person, mm -hmm. so I don't really yearn for things like that from the past. Do you have fun? Hmm? Do you have fun? I'm having fun? Yeah. Do, do I have fun? Yeah. Like what? Fun. Well, fun. What, what is fun? In, but like, like enjoy life. Kick a football or yeah. what, what? What is fun? Drink. Oh, yeah. uh, to enjoy life. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. I mean, what Are choice? Do, is there any choice? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, people have killed themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> but not, n but not on their own accord. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's that might be after discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy the Oscar celebration? Wasn't that something? I wasn't there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you have ever, do you agree that at some point you reflected your times? It's been said many times. I think I always do. Mm. How I don't think I could uh, reflect any other period of time than the time I find myself in. Do you try to reflect or react upon the time that you live in? Mm. Probably the, the latter. Reactive. The, the the latter one. I yeah, maybe a bit of both. I, I don't really know. Imagine yourself being a newcomer nowadays. Do you have any chance in the business? Me as a newcomer? I think so, because uh, if you have the ability and the knowledge and uh, you know and uh, the strength to do it, you know that's all you really need. And I think I know more about what I'm doing now than, than I, I ever, um, I, I know I could find a place if that's what I wanted to do. But I don't think I'd want to do it if I come on now. I'd, like I said, I'd do something else. Do you keep in contact with George Harrison? I do. I, I do do that. Will, will the Wilbur's travel again? It's hard to say. What, what, what will that period like for you? The Wilburys? Yeah. Well, we made a few records, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, 
was a time of great undertaking. Yeah. <laughs> it surprised a lot of people to see you as part of the band like that. Really? Yeah. It surprised my, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that you're part of a band now? That the, the, me? The, the whole crowd of guys that you, that you play with? Seems there's a good unity, at least when I saw you on stage. Mm -hmm. There's a good sort of band atmosphere rather than Bob Dylan with his backup, you know, musicians. Well, I always try to have a current band or cu current perf uh, performers with, uh, you know, the ability to play this music. Uh, you, you never know uh, how long you can keep a band together or, what, or when a band will, will, will change one individual to another. I mean, those things are unforeseen, you know, but th this particular you know, group is you know, pretty competent and can go a lot of different ways musically. Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, until uh, one day I just might have had it, you know. Uh, could, I don't know. Um, I, I can't say when the crowds dwindle down because the crowds uh, aren't dwindling down. Um, but I may just one day have had enough. What keeps the energy of people? Huh? What keeps the energy of people? The energy? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it's fictitious. The energy, it's it's a it's, it's a fictional thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's uh, once you set up certain like like anybody who knows how to do anything or who learns how to do it over a period of time, there's certain strategies, stratagems, uh, codes, uh, techniques. Um, that all go, go that, that play in a certain way. So once you can set these things up uh, and you know how to do them, then, then the um, uh, energy and, and emotion, whatever it seems like is happening, uh, it, it's just a combination that, that happens in a kind of in a combustible way. Uh, but as far as energy goes, it, it doesn't take energy. That, the type of energy you're talking about, it, it, it's not that kind of energy is being used. Huh? Do you feel like you're still getting better? Um, I feel I could get better. Uh, um, if if you know if I if I if I really put my mind to it. And I would think, for instance, you you sing on on the new record might be the best time. I've heard from you. Well, it, it may be, uh, but I don't think I'm singing any better on it than than I than I have in the past. I mean, it I may be uh, perceived or recorded, you know, in, in a in in a in a better way. Well, there's well documented changes in your life, perceived or otherwise, if it's real or not. One of them, end of part one, for a lot of people was so sort of after a lot of time on stage. And after bringing it all back home, I was 61 and blonde and blonde. You had a motorbike accident. Whether it was as exaggerated or as real as you might make it out to be, did that allow you to change and be different or be yourself and not be on the treadmill? Or did it make you not be on the treadmill? And what was the question? The question basically is this, when John Wesley Harding came out, say, a few years later, people said, this is a different Dylan. It was a time of love and peace, etc. It was completely oh. different than anything else. Did that allow you, the motorbike accident, to sort of change or did it change you? Did it change you? Uh, like around the same time George Harrison was flying back from Candlestick Park, he said, I'm never playing with people again. This is just mad as can't hear anything on stage, I don't know what the people are doing. And they mm. never did play again. Mm -hmm. You kind of got off the treadmill. Was that, was that a conscious decision? And you kind of used the motorbike accident, which maybe wasn't as bad as... Well... Um... It's difficult for me to pinpoint any any time where I made any conscious decision to do this or or that, um, but obviously, I mean, uh, uh, that period of time you're talking about, uh, I just didn't feel like going out and play. I, I didn't feel like I was part of that culture. When you said earlier, you don't necessarily look up to celebrities or people who are currently in the business or whatever. 
you did get on very well with Bonham in the early 1980s. Did you tell him that because of what you knew in Greenwich Village, say, from Brendan B and Tommy Macon, the chances, etc., maybe you should be looking back at that kind of music as a obviously in his blood? Um, I, I could have. I don't remember verbatim or time and place, or but I mean, if you, if uh, if I'm being held responsible for telling him that, uh, I, I I I don't really know that I could deny that. Do you, do you look for inspiration in poetry still? Do you are you still eagerly looking for poets that you may not have heard of or read yet, um, or do you go back to the ones that have influenced you, like maybe Rambo or somebody? Uh, You know, I I don't really study the poetry or, or yeah, I mean that. You know. but are you searching for new writers to new writers? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I just don't think there are any uh, 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 because we live in a different time. The media is 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 all pervasive. What can a writer think of to write that you don't see every day, you know, in, in a newspaper or on television or, 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 huh? There are emotions that need to be expressed. Yeah, but, um, but, uh, but, but the media is moving people's emotions anyway. Uh, it's, you know, when these guys you're talking about, when Ron Bowe is writing or William Blake or, or you know, or, or, or Shelley or Byron or any of those people, uh, the, uh, the, there probably wasn't any media, just bulletins and you could feel free you know to to um, you know put down anything you know that came to that came into your mind but do you feel free when you are writing you are writing in this time well like I say I don't particularly sit down and write I, I, I it's my my, my my lines go into songs and uh, they have a certain structure mm. and um they have to conform to a certain idiom, um, and and they're they're not free form, and uh, and there there's no point to trying to throw in uh, some ideological uh, uh, type of thing to. Uh, well, you can't do it in a song. A song cannot do it. I've done it. If I've done it, I did it de facto. You know, um, but but I, I've never intentionally started out to, to, you know, with that in mind. I mean, I never have. Maybe some others have, but I haven't. But do you think that TV and the media have killed poetry and literature because? Oh, absolutely. Things? You think so? Absolutely. Because no, no because even a, even literature is written for an audience. You know, it's not written. One man doesn't sit down and like everybody's in a Kafka sit down and, and write something. You know, if that should never be seen by you don't want anybody to see you know most people sit down they want people to see it they want people to read it you know they they they, they want a person's reaction they want a um some type of acceptance but if, all, if all writers have wanted that yeah of course but the media is doing that for everybody now they're 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 in movies and uh, uh tv and uh, uh I mean, you can't see any more horrific things than you see on the media, especially in the news. I'm just talking about the, the news department, which, which, which is showing people absolutely everything they've ever even dreamed about, you know, the, 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 uh, even thoughts that they might think and suppress for, you know, forever. They'll see it in, in the media, so they can't, you can't suppress those things anymore. And what's a writer to do? If, if every idea is, is exposed in the media before he can get to it or let it evolve, what's the writer going to write about? But one thing is what you see and the, the, other, the other thing is how you react against that, how you react to that. Well, it's a That's science fiction reason. world, though. We're living in a science fiction world. We're living in a world that you know, Disney has conquered, Disney's science fiction. Um, uh, theme parks. Um, trendy uh, uh, streets. It's all science fiction. So, I would say, if a writer, you know, has got something to say, you'd have to, you'd have to do it in that. Outside uh, of the outside of the real world. That is the real world. Science fiction has become the real world. 
or whether we realize it or not, it has, you know. In the, in the liner notes to um, um, Well Gone Wrong, you were talking about, uh, um, I'll show you the real um, alternative lifestyle, the agrarian one. Do you think yeah. that's one of the solutions, perhaps? Or well, I think so, uh, but it's quite difficult with, uh, you know, corporate corporate entities paying you know farmers not to grow things uh it's it's it becomes a problem is that one of the issues that still move you hmm? is that one of the issues that still move you enough to uh well yeah i'm i'm, I'm partial to the land so you know i kind of you know i in, in the same line of notes uh referring to in the work on wrong you talk about the new dark ages in the contemporary world well the stone age stone. they put it that way yeah we've got what the uh, we talk about these ages before the golden age which was you know the, the i guess the age of homer and then we got the silver age uh and then you got the uh uh bronze age i think you have a heroic age someplace in there and then you got what we're living in where people call the iron age but it could really be the Stone Age. We could be living in the Stone Ages. Maybe in the Silicon Age. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you check out the internet? Silicon Valley, huh? Do you guys go on the internet? Do I go on the internet? Yes. I I'm afraid to go on the internet. I'm afraid somebody's gonna, some pervert's gonna lure me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As if you needed uh, to, uh, yeah. to place Yeah. Do you, um, but don't you, uh, don't you think that the emotions and the, uh, the fears and the that basically love and religion and you know the basic emotional uh, uh, feelings that humans um, <coughs> have are the same since the Romans or since the Egyptians pretty much people look for the same thing people look for a connection to another human being well, connection to a higher being probably but everybody knew their role and their place the class system was different in a Roman age plus you know you could uh, was that good, though? I don't know I wasn't there <laughs> really? Are you sure? You know it. <laughs> you especially. Because <laughs> you weren't there with me. <laughs> but, there, but there seems to be an. And, and I am Roman. So exactly. I'm the only one. Can okay, then you can there say it. There seems to be an uh, apocalyptic dimension to your work. Uh, the end is nigh when you're seeing it. Uh, if the Bible is right, the world would explode. You think and things have changed, and people are crazy, and times are strange. Is this a particularly bad time we're living in? I mean, besides it being the Stone Age, so the Age, and all that. I don't so know. One's bad as I don't know. I mean, who knows? Do you go to religion for comfort? Do you go to some sort of meditative state? Well, I try. <laughs> I mean, who would I be if I didn't try? You read the Bible? Of course. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. You write the Bible. Yeah. Do you, do you read uh, Shakespeare? Mm -hmm. Do you read Shakespeare? I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Who's in better? In one of your, uh, in one of your uh, you are referring a lot to uh, old lines from old movies, Empire Burlesque. Uh, did you read those uh, writers? Uh, uh, Hammond, Chandler, Did I read them? Yeah. I don't. I don't remember. No. Uh, Just old movies. I know what you mean, but uh, I think I basically. I think I just saw the movies. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what about music? Do, 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 you, do you listen to a lot of music now, nowadays? Mm -hmm. Some, yeah, you, you not anymore than I ever did. Do you listen to a, a, any new music or is it all? Mm, I don't know, like who's new? Well, uh, I mean, a lot I, of Stanley Brothers uh, covers on your shows. When I saw you at Halston's Theatre last year, you played uh, Hallelujah, I'm Ready to Go. Me? Yeah, you, you played. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, but those aren't new songs. I don't know, but those are old yeah. songs. But what is so special about the Stanley Brothers? Well, uh, you know, it's like the old thing. If you, if somebody has to tell you, then you'd never know. Okay. Yeah. So, talking about new music, Eminem seems to be like people uh, tend to call him a, a, a poet. Do you think about this? Would you recommend on that? I, 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 I wouldn't know anything about that. 
have paid attention to hip hop and uh, so? Mm. Do you recognize maybe a certain folk quality storytelling? A folk quality? Yeah. In the storytelling sense of Eminem is a good example. Some other people will actually tell this, their life stories or reflect it. Like, you know, I think Chuck D said this, that um, hip hop is the CNN of music. Hmm. Beats me. <laughs> you don't pay attention to it? Uh, uh, I, it, it never really occurred to me to pay attention to, uh, to, 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 to whatever is supposed to be going on. When I was on stage, uh, I, sometimes when you're standing with the guitar on stage, uh, it reminds me of some of the old Elvis Presley poses from 1955, 56. Can you relate to that? No. I, 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 some pictures are, it's, it's very similar to uh, some of the Well, is that a compliment or? or yes, yeah, a compliment. Oh, what is um. <laughs> But you always uh, uh, had a strong influence on, on your... He did. Growing up, he did, yeah. Um, when he recorded, <coughs> made a beautiful recording of your song, Tomorrow is a Long Time. Yeah. Remember how you reacted to that? Oh, well, you know, <coughs> what can you say? You know, when, when somebody like, when that, when somebody like that, you know, <coughs> records a song, I'm sure any songwriter would feel, you know, um, you know, intensely gratified. Would you say that there's a lineage? Somebody said that Elvis freed the body, Bob Dylan freed the mind. Said uh, that? Yeah, freed the mind. Uh, well, it's good to be liberated. You know, whatever, whatever, and from whatever. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we should all feel that way. Did you play this record to your son, Jacob? Um, uh, I think he got it maybe from one of his brothers, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, I've been traveling for a while. One more Elvis question: Did you meet him? Did you meet Elvis? Um, I never did meet him. You never did. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> huh? That's what I'm supposed to say, yeah. Why aren't you playing any songs from Love and Theft Live yet? Well, uh, there's, no, there's no point to it because... Uh, Not tomorrow? No way. No way? Uh -huh. No. You won't hear any of those songs. There'll be 12 people in the audience who know the songs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, some of the old uh, uh, folk songs that you play, probably not more than 12 people in the audience have heard. That's true. This is true. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what's the difference? Uh, there, there is a difference. Uh, I'm, I'm not really free to say it right now, but there, there's a... Uh, a if if you know the songs on this record and you know the songs that uh, nobody's heard before, then you you would know you would know how to tell the difference. There's almost a, a religious feeling within your hardcore fans about how do you feel about that? Uh, I don't really feel like I have any hardcore fans. You know, I mean, I just don't. There's some people who do. I, I really just don't. I believe we have a few people who who see an abundance of amount of shows, but we we, we don't think of them as hardcore fans. Huh? The religious feeling? Well, what religion are they? I mean, if they are, what, what sacrifices do they make? And to who? Uh, do, they, do they sacrifice these hardcore religious fans? Uh, do they? Have, uh, do they? If, if they do, then we have hardcore religious fans. And I would like to know where and when they do make their sacrifices, because I I'll, I'll, I'll want to be there. Somebody once told me that you, you, your collected work is like the Bible because everything is in there somewhere. Well, that's that without, you know, goes without saying. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a fortnight ago, I, I had a an interview with Leonard Cohen in which uh, he told me, uh, when I asked him uh, that reclaiming to himself the fact of being a poet was too much of a burden and too much of a, resp of a responsibility. Do you, do you agree with that in, uh, in your case? 
Um, I, I I know what he was trying to say, and uh, um, he's right. You signed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are quite a few um, books published about you. Do you read? Do I read biographies? Uh, do I read the biographies of myself? Mm, I, I hadn't read any really since that Bob Shelton book, which came out. Um, I, and I knew him. I don't know these other people. Did you like him? Did you like him? Uh, and it, 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 it was. Uh, it's difficult reading about oneself because uh, in your own mind things really didn't go they, did, they don't appear that way they didn't happen that way the way it seems uh, this uh, um, it seems very uh, it seems like uh, you're reading we're reading about other people uh, fictitious you know fictitious and if it's going to be fictitious well then it where is all the good stuff you know, like the stuff. You know. If you had any temptation to write about, you know, Me? about you all. Yeah, I, I have, and, and, and I will. Mm. Are you in, in the process of doing that? Mm -hmm. they, uh, they just uh, translated Tarantula in French, mm. you know, which is a scary concept. Mm -hmm. um, how, was um, the fact that the, 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 the ambition of being a, a poet that writes? as opposed to um, song and dance man. Did you get it out of the way with ta Tarantula? Or did, uh, um, you know, did, was that something that you sort of uh, said, okay, I've done that? Oh, I think that that's a particular uh, instant and in, uh, uh, that um, things were running wild at that point. Uh, and um, it, it never was, uh, you know, my intention to to write a book, you know. But I think, uh, wasn't there, didn't Lennon write a book or something? Yeah, something like that. Well, I had a manager who, when when asked, um, well, well, he writes all these songs. You know, what else does he write? You know, and, and, and he might have said, he might have said, well, uh, um, well, what do you, what do you, what do you got? And they said, well, does he write books? And he might have said, of course he does. And and uh, uh, they said, well, we would like a, we would like to publish one. Well, I think it was one of those kind of things, where where, uh, where, where he he arranged the whole thing, and then it was up to me to write the book. And and it was never anything that I consciously set out to do. Um, but he did that. You know, he did that, uh, you know, uh, on a, um, different occasions. He had me on a television show of being an actor. Whereas, I, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it until the, the day I appeared. I th thought I was going to sing. <laughs> and uh, he, th th these things would happen uh, back in the early part of the last century. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that the poet. It's a long time ago, isn't it? Ages ago. But if you were willing to comply with that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You just did this TV sitcom. Huh? You just did this TV sitcom in America, Dharma and Greg, I think. Dharma and Greg? Yeah. yeah. You did that. I did. Why? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. I wasn't doing anything, and I didn't know the guy who was writing it. Was it fun? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> uh, well, why wouldn't it have been? There was a rumor about you doing a, a variety show on, on some t television. Uh, it's just a rumor. Because that seemed like the craziest thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the things that you're writing now, is that a sort of a memoir? It is. Uh, are, you, are you having any mm -hmm. reason, plans for it? Publication of that is mm -hmm. coming quite soon. It, it will be. Next year, um, well, I think it will be published, um, as I'm told, uh, in a in an article form. But uh, in a, as a book, mm -hmm. but uh, but articles because they're they're <laughs> ongoing, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
that's as bad as much as, as uh, about your own life. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that uh, the only thing you're writing? Are you, are you thinking of writing any other fiction? And, uh, no, I, I'm not. I'm not writing any fiction. I'd like to come back to George Harrison. Now as you're here in Europe, are you going to visit him? I don't think I'm going to have time on this, but uh, I'll probably will be eventually trying to see him. You know, maybe he gets back home or something. Does the fact that you wrote uh, your own memoirs um, has an influence of the songs you play on stage? Well, uh, th that's interesting you say that because a lot of the memoirs take, they, they uh, use as a starting point uh, uh, certain songs. Yeah. And I, f I find that a, uh, 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 that, um, That's a good way to to get into a lot, to unlock a lot of memories and things. Yeah. Are you writing on the road? Um, I'll, I'll write uh, an I ideas, but I, I I won't really develop them on the road. But I'll I'll write you know big blocks of work from where I want to get to. But you're not read any of the biographies after Robert Shelton. Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, were there, w w w w or have there been any? Oh, yes. There's been like seven, yeah. Um, yeah? This year, on the, well, the, the very thing, the show. I'll have to see. I mean, I'm not aware there were any. Yeah. <laughs> oh. do, you, do you feel that the time, why do you feel that the time is right, the time is right now to, um, for you to reflect upon your past? Or was it? Were you like preparing that for years? Oh, I, you know, I think in, in in this kind of stuff that that I'm writing, I think it was just uh, finding the right uh, way to get into it, mm -hmm. rather than make it some kind of self-serving story of my my particular past. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't come off that way. Mm -hmm. well, it comes off that way, but it doesn't. But it's 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 um, dissimilar in, in in a lot of ways. I, I can do it because I'm a famous person, <laughs> so I use that fame. Because a lot of things I talk about or I write about, other people know about anyway. Uh -huh. So, uh, so with a person like myself, it it, 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 the process of doing it this way uh, works. Do you find it uh, exhilarating this this writing as opposed to the more deconstructed way of writing songs that you were describing? Is this something a new exercise that sort of? Uh, no, I, I don't really think about it one way or another. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not making a, 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 a real attempt to do this. I just do it like almost in spare time, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in a phase in your life that you consider a um, really difficult phase? Huh? Is there any phase in your life that you that you see as a very difficult phase, especially difficult? Any phase in my life that I see as difficult? Like I'm sure difficult. there's been many, but. Uh, Huh? The most difficult. The most difficult. Um, oh man. Um, Press no, there there have been there have been uh, a lot of tricky th uh, tr tr tricky parts, you know, where you have to assume a different character in order to. Um, uh, survive. What, what are you thinking of? What phase? What years? Well, basically, you have to um, um, surrender your ambitions at a certain point. You know, if if, uh, if you know, in order to um, get to where you need to be. We're going to have time for just a few more questions. So. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll take it. What kind of ambitions did you ever surrender? <laughs> well, that's, that, you know, that's what you're going to have to find out. <laughs> in, uh, in one of those books or articles, or somebody said that you are probably happier in the tour bus than in any of your 17 homes. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, yeah, and well, it, it, the, the buses, uh, yeah, they're, they're becoming quite luxurious now. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, but pre I'm pretty happy. Every, I mean, uh, as far as happy goes, as far as feeling at home goes, I can't say I don't feel at home most anywhere. 
you feel at home in all Australia? Um, probably, yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel at home at home, and I, and I feel, uh, you know, when I'm not there, it's not like I'm longing um, for anything that's not presently where I'm at. What's it like being Bob Dylan nowadays? Is it easier than it was before? Um, I'm, I'm not the one to ask. <laughs> you know, that's a philosophical question for philosophical matters. Have you tried being someone else? You ever tried being someone else? Um, I'm sure, but uh, you know, we all try to be someone else when we're when we're starting uh, from point zero. You know, Bob, you mentioned earlier on that uh, some of the stuff from the past you don't really want to listen to that much. You don't go back and listen to your old albums. Yeah, if it's autobiographical stuff, you write in via journals or whatever. You say the entry is the sounds. Mm -hmm. so in which case, you'd be forced to go back. It's like somebody getting the greatest hits together and collaborating. With company. Yeah. So in, in that way, if you look back at some of the cheeses, that was good. Mm -hmm. Well. I, I, I don't, I'm only looking at it from an angle that maybe uh, it's never occurred to me before to look at it. Uh, a, l a lot of the things that uh, happened to us, we, we, we just seem to go through uh, w without ever wondering if there's a purpose to go from this to that, or why did this happen, if, you know, without, could this have happened if that didn't happen? And if this did seem so, if this seemed so bad at the time, why it led to something uh, so beneficial in the in, in the in the long run, you know. So it's it's written from a variety of angles, really, and 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 it interests me to to write it. Uh, but I'm not uh, painstakingly doing it now. Which, uh, looking back on your 43 albums, uh, which ones do you think are the most successful artistically, seen from Bob Dylan's point of view? Well, successful, you know, I never listened to them. Um, I'm sure they were all successful in their way, and I'm sure they all were, f were failures in, in, in their own way. I don't think... Uh, but you express great discontent with producers, and we talked about a lot of theft, you were expressing discontent with the way you be produced, but some of them must hold up better than others, in your own opinion, even though you don't listen to them that much. I don't listen to them because I never think, feel that the songs have been perfected. You know, like, like, like and I used to have a problem, I don't anymore, with... Uh, um, working on a uh, on some uh, record album where a song might have been recorded, but I didn't particularly think it, it had been recorded very well, uh, or the right way, or the way I hear it in my mind, or for many uh, myriad reasons. And um, you know, six months or maybe four months or whenever that then the song as it exists gets out on a, a you know it, it by people you, you trust uh, make copies and uh, they put it out there for the public uh, to to hear and I feel like that's happened too much in 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 my case so um, well just with people that you know we we uh, have no reason to distrust at the time so. Um, People, you know, I've, I've, I've been asked, you know, like, well, how come you're such a bad judge of your own material? You don't put the best stuff on your record. Well, I don't know who judges what the best stuff is and that, but the, basically, the, you know, I'm not judging material. I just don't, don't. I, I would love to put certain things on. But I just don't think they were, were recorded right. Uh, and then once it gets out, I'm not really um, that keen on going in and and re-recording it, except on this record that you all just heard. Yeah, like we had that on the Time Out of Mind record, but but um, it wasn't recorded particularly well. And, uh, uh, you know, thanks God it never got out, so we went and re-recorded it again, but something like that would never have happened 10 years ago. You'd have probably all heard the, the trash version of it. And I never would have re-recorded it. So, so, so that doesn't mean you, you, you take more care in making Well, I don't take more care, you just don't trust anybody. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's basically, I mean, that's that simple. Do you think that sometimes some records need a second chance? Like, you, apparently uh, there was a remixed version of Street Legal that came out, um, if, I mean, two years ago. Um, and do you think maybe that, that some of these albums were overlooked by, uh, because they came out at a time when people were interested in, in something else than Bob Dylan? Certainly Street Legal had seen, you know, uh, well, I don't know about street legal. Probably didn't. Uh, 
there were probably other artists who were being featured in, uh, you know, in the in the in the media and uh, the cultural landscape was a little different back then, probably. Uh, um, I don't. I, I wouldn't know. I know that I've always been with the same record company. They probably tried everything to sell it, and it probably wasn't what people wanted to hear at that time. Mm -hmm. He said about this record, it's a greatest hits album without the greatest hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Yeah. Well, you're all going to have to really even see about this particular album. I mean, it may. It just might be a, a landmark album. I mean, you know, we never know these things up until it, until much later than 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 uh, than the, the event itself even though it might be an invisible event that we're talking about would you like um, would however you, i mean you, like you all in this room you have the responsibility of of saying what this record is oh. and 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 knowing that in uh, 10 years time people are still going to be writing about it right. and and not counting kind of getting on the record because the record will be set in stone at that time but everybody everything you all say that's what everybody will be commenting on. It's a great album, and um, I, must, uh, I think most of the people here really are very successful during listening. And, uh, well, you're going to have to listen a whole lot more, <laughs> but, uh, like you do those early albums. The, you're playing the, your songs on, on stage uh, year after year. Do you feel that they change, that they are different from each time you sing Well, that, that goes back to what I said earlier. My records are n undeveloped it's from day one. Basically, fundamentally, I sing a song and I strum it on a guitar. Uh, you know, in, in uh, uh, recording technology, that's called making demos. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's no accident that other singers have had better hits with my songs than I have. There's no accident. Because they've sensed there's a structure to them. And and there is. But I have never been allowed to develop that structure working with slipshot producers or or, or fakes uh, or a bunch of non entities, you know. And and uh, and so be it. Uh, but that still and that I've, I've been willing to allow that to happen because I was always able to go on the stage and rectify it. So, no, no, what I'm saying is that songs need structure, stratagems, mm. codes, and stability. And then you can hang lyrics on, I mean, I, I, I'm speaking here as a, as a, as a um, someone who uh, sings a song that's written. Um, and when we transfer these songs to to the to the uh, stage, that's where all that comes into play. It doesn't come into play on a record because uh, my cohorts at the time never really sought to develop any of that stuff, and I can't do it at the time of recording because the song at the time is new to me. You know, I'm I'm more concerned with. Uh, getting this lyric to fit into this frame and does this you know, line work here and can we change the key to make it work better and, or can we change the tempo can, can we change the dynamic of a tune can we uh, 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 use different syncopation I don't know I'm more concerned with those things I'm not concerned with what exactly is the structure and I don't know, I've been disappointed because no one outside of myself has ever come in and given me one, you know? Is there any song out there you wish? Yeah, all these people who, seem, who claim to know my music and songs so well, they don't have a clue. We have time for one more question, so. On, the, on, the, on this record, it seems like you have a real cohesive sound, um, kind of in a, in a sort of Bob Wills or, or Spade Cootie type of thing. Where there's a, there's a Let's problem. stop talking about Bob Wills <laughs> and, and Spade Cooley. I just meant. In, 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 let's <laughs> let's put them on the pedestal where they belong and let's let's stop. Okay, sorry. I just meant, I just meant in a in a there's a lot of music going on and it, it feels very cohesive. Like it's it feels very cohesive and and it doesn't feel cluttered or. And you know what my comment is that it should. It should sound that way. It was intentionally delivered that way. That's 
That's what it should sound like. Was Love and Theft the best album you ever made? Oh, I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> it's the most current album I've ever made. <laughs> Thank you all for <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Now I'm going, now I'm going to go see the Coliseum. <laughs> and see if the streets are full of rubble. Exactly. <laughs> Gentlemen, peace to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice to meet you. Picture? Absolutely. Nice to meet you. On a personal note, my dad was born the May 23rd, 1941. Hey, that's well. What, you're <laughs> below me? Or? Uh, 41. Oh, say hello. Is he still on earth? Yeah, he's, oh. he's gone. But uh, I told him that, and, I said, and he said, oh, it was a good time for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We don't have time to do this with everybody, so please do this the last one, okay? All righty. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Pleasure, always. Pleasure. Thank you very much. See you in Amsterdam. Okay. Yeah. Joe Strong says hi. Joe Strong, say hi to him back. Well, I gave him the record. Oh, the Mescaleros. Yeah, the new one I get. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I bought you a book by a Dutch woman oh, author. Thank you. Okay. Good. 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 Bob, why don't we head out this yeah. way? Okay. All right. All right. Ciao. Au revoir. Thank you. Au revoir. Take care. Thanks, everyone.